Section 1.1, Part A, is on variables and constants. The first definition is of a variable. And a variable is a symbol that is used to represent an unknown quantity. Key here being unknown quantity. Okay. Examples of variables are x, y, or a, b, any letters you can be used to represent a variable. You often sometimes see some Greek letters, so you might see tau or theta as variables in some instances, especially if you're in a science class. Okay. In example one, we're supposed to let p be the price in dollars to see a concert. I want to know what is the meaning of p equals 75. This is a case of putting units back onto variables and values. So if P is equal to 75, that means that it cost $75 to see the concert. In part B, we're going to let T, the variable T, be the number of years since 2000. I want to know what is the meaning of T equals 10 and what is the meaning of T equals negative 5. T equals 10 is going to be 10 years since 2000 or the year 2010. And T equals negative 5 is going to be 5 years before 2000 or the year 1995. So you can reference a year value and talk about past or future years before or years after that year by using positive or negative values of the variable. In part C, we're going to let capital T be the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So we want to talk about what value of capital T would represent the temperature 20 degrees Fahrenheit below zero? So this is kind of the opposite of parts A and B right here. The expression, if I want to be below zero, would have to be T equals negative 20. The next definition is of a constant. A constant is a known quantity, as opposed to variables being the unknown quantity. And examples of a constant might be just a number like 3 or negative 2 thirds or uh, pi. Pi is a number even though I'm using a symbol to represent it. It is a known quantity. In example 2, we know that a rectangle has an area of 8 square feet. We want W to be the width, L to be the length, and A to be the area. First, in part A, I want to sketch three possible rectangles that have an area of eight square feet. So the first one, I, I want to think of uh, different ways to multiply to eight because I know the area is length times width. So the first one I might draw might be a rectangle that had one for its width and eight for its length because I know that one times eight is eight. That's one possible way to draw a rectangle that's going to have eight for its area. Another possible way, again, I'm trying to multiply to 8, would be 2 times 4. If I had 2 and 4, and I know I'm not drawing this to scale, but I know that 2 times 4 also gives me 8. Okay. If I need to think of another way to multiply to 8, I could think about it being, say, 4 by 2, and that's also going to give me 8. It's a different picture to have your rectangle with a width of 2 and a length of 4 than it is with a width of 4 and a length of 2. But those are three different examples, like I was asked to do, that all have an area of eight square feet. Okay. Part B asks which of the symbols, length, width, and area, are variables in this context, and which are constants. Okay. I'm going to be able to label these as variables and constants. Now, we know that from the previous examples, these values, 1, 8, 2, 4, 4, 2, were all changing, but the area being 8 was not changing. That means that the variables are length and width, but in this situation, the constant is the area. Area did not change in each of those, so I can use, again, in this context, the area is always 8. I can use 8a as a constant. Let's flip to the back side of this page for the next example. A person is driving three miles over the speed limit. For each speed shown, find the driving speed. So if they're going three miles over the speed limit, 
if they're driving the speed limit I mean was 55 then if I add 3 to that 58 miles per hour would be the driving speed if the speed limit is 70 this person likes to go 3 over so 70 plus 3 73 it's going to be their driving speed if the speed is s and they want to go 3 over the speed is just going to be s plus 3 whatever s plus 3 is that's the eight expression we call s plus 3 an expression that's the expression that represents the driving speed and notice that i put the units miles per hour on the numbers you do not usually put units on expressions so i haven't written mph after that okay so s plus 3 is an expression an expression is a combination of variables constants and operations such as, well, operations are going to be anything that you find in the order of operations. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, exponents, etc. And we simplify an expression by substituting a number for each variable in the expression and calculating the result. So example three continued. We want to substitute 65 for s and make expression s plus three and discuss the meaning. All right. So it goes, uh, 65 goes in for s. So it's going to be 65 right here in for s plus three equals 68. All right. So when I discuss the meaning, I have to make sure that I talk about both the value that you plugged into the expression and the value that you got out of the expression. My sentence needs to include both numbers. So the meaning is going to be that if that 65, let's mention that first, that 65 was the uh, speed limit. S is the speed limit. We're going three miles over. So if 65 miles per hour uh, is the speed limit okay this person is going to be driving 68 miles per hour again using both of our values explain what the 65 represents and explain what the 68 the outcome represents example four a person buys N CDs and the cost is 16 times N dollars. We want to evaluate 16N for N equals 8. So I'm going to plug 8 in for N. That's going to give me 16 times 8. And 16 times 8, if you got a calculator, figure that out. It's 128. And when I explain, I need to explain, again, both values. What does the 128 mean? What does the N equals 8 mean? So n equals 8 is going to be the number of audio CDs. So if a person buys 8 audio CDs, the cost is the result of 16 n's. So the cost is the $128. Let's look at example 5. A certain type of pen costs $3. I'm going to fill in the following table to describe the cost of N pens. All right, so it costs $3, and I want to buy five pens. What I need to do is take 3 times 5 to come up with $15. If I want to buy six pens, very similar, It'd be 3 times 6, $18. And seven pens, 3 times 7, $21. I really want to show what I'm doing here, the pattern, not just writing the 15. I want to show that I'm doing 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times 6 is 18, etc. Because thinking about how to calculate that value is how I build up the pattern to discover what the expression is going to be for n pens. It was 3 times 5, 3 times 6, it's going to be 3 times 7, and 3 times n. And that's going to be the expression for n pens. I also want to emphasize the fact that when you submit a homework problem like this in math lab, very often it's going to ask you to put the entire expression, the unsimplified version first, probably has two boxes like this, 
unsimplified version first and then the simplified version. Okay. Now I want to evaluate my result, which is the expression I computed here at the end, for n equals 10 and explain what it means. So this would be 3 times 10 is 30. And when I explain what it means, talk about both the value plugged in and the value you got out. The 10 is going to the number of pens. So we'll say that if we buy or buying 10 pens costs $30. Okay. Let's look at the next page. In example six, the number of a product introductions with low sugar claims was 342,001. That has increased, increased approximately 203 products per year. I'm going to complete the table and find the expression where T is going to years since 2001. Okay, so if T is years since 2001, that means that in 2001 we're looking at T equals zero, zero years since. And you can see that that first value has already been filled in for you. If it wasn't, you could figure that out and fill that value in right there. T is zero years since 2001, so in year zero, in 2001, there are 340 products. Okay. Now, it's going to increase each year. So in one year, we're going to increase it by 203 products. So we're going to have 203 plus 340, which gives you 543. And then in year two, you're going to increase it by another 203, which means that what you've really done is increase it by 203 twice. So you've got 203 times 2 plus 340. And if you calculate that, uh, 203 times 2 is, um, let's see, that would be 406 plus 340 is 746. In the third year, you'd have to increase by 203 three times, plus your 340. We'll give you, if you figure that out, we'll give you 949. Okay. Now, it's really important, again, to think about the fact that I'm not just going to take the output values and add 203, which you could get these values, but I need to think about the pattern. That I added 203 one time for the first year, and two times for the second year, and three times for the third year, to really get that pattern to write the expression. It's going to increase 203 every year for t years, whatever the t happens to be, plus the base of 340, and that's the expression that we can use for any value of t. Okay. Next, I want to evaluate the result for t equals 9, so that's 203 times 9 plus 340. So just go ahead and get a calculator, 203 times 9, figure out that would be an add your 340, believe that it comes out to be 2,167. Okay, and I want to discuss the meaning, and when I discuss a meaning like this, I make sure that I always talk about the value I plugged in and the value we got out. Okay, the value that I plugged in is a T value, T is years since 2001, so if I take my 2001 and add 9 to it, it's going to put me in the year 2010, right? 2001 plus 9 is 2010. <clears throat> so in 2010, there were 2,167 products introduced that had low sugar claims. Let's look at example seven. Some students rent an apartment together. Each roommate pays an equal share of $900 rent. In part A, I want to let N be the number of roommates. I want to find an expression that describes each roommate's share. So it's a $900 rent, and they're going to share equally. I'm going to take that 900 and divide it by the N, which is the number of roommates. That's going to be my expression. In part B, I want to evaluate my expression for n equals 5. So I would have 900 divided by 5. 900 divided by 5 is 180. And I want to discuss the meaning of the result. 
So in my explanation, I want to talk about n equals 5, and I want to talk about 180. n equals 5, n is the number of roommates, so that means that if there are 5 roommates, the 180, the result of the expression, is each roommate share the rent. So the cost per person is $180. And that's the end of this section.